Indiana Beach is an eclectic amusement park on the shores of Lake Schaefer. This park almost closed for good after the 2019 season, but it was saved by businessman Gene Staples. And I sure am glad this park was rescued. This park has a great atmosphere and a unique ride lineup. You have six operating roller coasters, with a seventh slated to open later this year. Then you also have a fun mix of flat rides, dark rides, and water rides to round out the offerings. So in this video, I'll rank Indiana Beach's top 15 rides and attractions. Before starting the countdown, I want to note some attractions that will not be included. I have not visited the attached water park, so none of the water slides will be included. I also have not tried the park's sky coaster because it's an upcharge, but its placement above the lake looks amazing. Number 15, Antique Autos. This track guided car ride has an interesting multi-level layout, and it offers some of the best views of Lost Coaster. Number 14, Air Crow. This set of Larson flying scooters has a cool location over the water. You get a great breeze in this attraction, but you can forget about snapping. Not only is it banned, but it really isn't possible given this ride's slow speeds. Up next likely is where Cyclone would place. While I have not ridden this relocated Galaxy Coaster, I have ridden identical clones of this attraction elsewhere. This one operates with single car trains, so the drops don't offer the pops of airtime you can get on the ones with the longer trains. The ride experience is fairly tame between the small drops and mild helixes, but it is a super compact ride that's great for families. Number 13, Den of Lost Thieves. This Sally shooting dark ride is pretty crude. The small cars can only accommodate one adult, and you have frighteningly low clearances. I hit my gun on the ceiling at points, and I almost hit my head too. There are also a few bits on the ride where you pass work equipment. Eventually you reach the dark ride scenes, and this is where the ride falters. The ride feels dated and the targets don't react, and it's even harder to tell if you hit something because of no visual feedback and inconsistent audio feedback. This is still a unique two-story dark ride, but it is a flawed attraction. Number 12, Sky Ride. This scenic transportation ride runs along the midway. You get some cool aerial views of the park's wooden coasters and the lake. Number 11, Falling Star. This chance flying carpet doesn't offer any airtime, but you do get some wild laterals in this attraction. Most Falling Stars ban single riders, but this one doesn't. So if you ride solo, you slide back and forth across the entire seat. It's a neat sensation, and you get plenty of lats because the ride is a long cycle going in both directions. Number 10, Rocky's Rapids. This is a relocated arrow log flume, but it's honestly hard to tell. The layout is pretty simple, but it's intertwined with Cornball Express. The experience culminates in a decent final plunge, and the resultant splash can actually hit Cornball Express. Number 9, Schaefer Queen. This boat cruise is shockingly included with admission, and it takes you out on Lake Schaefer. This gives awesome views of both the park and nearby homes. Number 8, Hoosier Hurricane. One of the earliest coasters from Custom Coasters International doesn't have the power of their later rides. You only get a single spot of airtime, and there's only one good bit of laterals. Where this coaster shines though is in the visual department. This ride is placed over the lake and runs along the midway, so you get contrasting views of the energetic amusement park and scenic lake. And thanks to retracking before the 2020 season, the ride is mostly smooth. Check out my review if you want to hear more. Number 7, Tiger. This Schwarzkopf Jetstar is another relocation, and it has some pep to it. You have fun inline seating, and the first drop gives a little pop of airtime. Then the low right hand turns are great. They have some good force and whip to them. The rest of the ride isn't too eventful, but it is smooth despite its age. Number 6, Double Shot. This 8 story tall SNS drop tower is awkwardly placed behind the water park. The launch isn't the most powerful, but it throws me off because the vehicle oddly lowers all the way down to the ground before taking off. The highlights are the floater airtime atop the tower after the first two launches. The airtime is less abrupt than some of the other double shots, but it's still fun and you also get good views of the park and lake from the top. Number 5, Steel Hog. The prototype SNSL Loco opened with the world's steepest drop. That 111 degree plunge is unfortunately trimmed, so you don't get any airtime, but it does have some good zip to it once you clear the brakes. The highlight of this coaster are the two inversions. Both offer fantastic hang time. 
Then some of the transitions offer faint laterals and airtime for variety. This is another ride they have a full review on, but this is the park's best operating steel coaster. Number 4. Dr. Frankenstein's Haunted Castle This haunt is an upcharge, but it's well worth experiencing. This quirky walkthrough is surprisingly long as it spans three stories. There are no live actors, but there are animatronics. Some are sudden jump scares, while other are more drawn out scenes. Then you have some funhouse style effects, such as a crooked room, and a room with a dozen doors with only one that leads to the correct path. Lastly, you have one of the most terrifying effects on any attraction towards the end that I don't want to spoil here. Number 3. Water Swings You may be wondering why this set of swings is so high in this list, but it comes down to its placement and how it's run. This chance yo-yo is placed on a pier extending over the lake, so you swing over the water. Then this rise run fast. I cannot think of another chance swinger that runs faster. You really tilt forwards and backwards, which is pretty freaky with such minimalistic restraints. Especially because you come so close to the other swings as well. Number 2. Lost Coaster of Superstition Mountain This is one of the weirdest coasters in the world. This CCI creation was built inside the show building for a former dark ride, and it has impossibly tight turns and clearances, which is why you have those custom caged vehicles. If you want the wildest ride, sit in the back car facing backwards. Now usually roughness is a negative for a coaster, but it absolutely makes the experience for Lost Coaster. Because this ride's minimal height and speed, you only have a max speed of 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour, Lost Coaster generates its thrills with weird profiling. You are comically thrown about the car during the experience, getting a little airtime here and there, and downright wicked laterals. This would be uncomfortable on many rides, but the trains are extremely well padded so you can only laugh when you're chucked side to side. And despite having just 1,400 feet or 430 meters of track, this feels like a surprisingly long coaster. I love how bizarre this ride is, which I cover in its own review. And coming in at number 1 is Cornball Express. This CCI has modest stats, but it still has some great airtime. This ride runs with just buzz bars, so you really get launched out of your seat on several hills. I prefer this coaster in back because you have 3 or 4 drops with ejector airtime, but the front also gets a mix of ejector pops and floater airtime throughout the layout. Then you also have some good laterals throughout the ride for variety, most notably on that minimally banked helix. I also love this ride's placement as you wind over pathways, water, and other rides. I also have a review on this coaster, but it's my favorite ride I've experienced at Indiana Beach. Now, once American Dryer Looping opens, I suspect that will be the park's best attraction. I experienced the Schwarzkopf Looper as Chimera back when it operated at La Feria de Chapultepec in Mexico, and it was the most intense coaster I've ever ridden. The coaster ran ridiculously fast there, and it delivered some of the best positive G's of any coaster. All three loops subject riders to over 5 G's, and I think that final one goes even higher. It's an automatic gray out for me. Then the lack of braking allows the coaster to maintain its speed start to finish. So the unassuming dips and turns at the end gave shocking bits of airtime and laterals you don't typically get on a Schwarzkopf. I cannot wait until this coaster reopens so I can experience its power once again, but check out my review on Chimera if you want to know what you can expect. So those are my top 15 favorite rides and attractions at Indiana Beach. What are your favorite rides at this lakeside amusement park? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.